down from that point forward, I'm full right aileron, full right rudder, and modulating thrust so I can either climb without lateral control or uh, descend with lateral control, which is an issue when you're headed towards the boneyard at Mojave. Yeah, um, minor issue. Do we, do we have the video? Let's see if we have it. Anyway, about that time we'd been approached by a jet engine company. They wanted to put a jet uh, turboprop on my racer, on Wasabi the Siren. Uh, and we were kind of cooking that around, and to be perfectly honest, I wasn't really st stoked about uh, cutting up my racer. So um, the, they saw the quickie and got pretty excited about the idea. I said, well, we could throw two of your motors on that. And they got pretty wound up about it. In the meantime, the engine had never flown in the United States. It was uh, just a prototype running on a bench in, in, their, uh, in their facility. So they were really excited about the idea of debuting the engine uh, in the United States, and I made the pitch that it needed to be debuted here. That there, uh, and I think the crowd probably agree that this is the place, if you want to talk about airplanes, I think Peter's done so, this is where it would need to be. So we sort of sketched out the arc of a program that would result with the airplane being here after having flown, very similar to the arc that you guys traced. Uh, just as we were sort of getting uh, things gathered up, we were approached by Red Bull TV. They wanted to film a documentary about one of our projects. We keep sort of a stable in Mojave of projects. I try to keep five or six ready to go at any given time for things like this that pop up. So we were walking them around between hangars and, uh, and I showed them the quickie sort of on a whim saying, hey, this is not meet meeting your time frame. They wanted to be flying in like a month. It doesn't meet your time frame, but check it out. And they fell in love. Uh, they very much wanted to play with the, with the quickie and, um, and were willing to uh, do all they could to inspire us until we were willing to uh, uh, move the schedule to the left and we did so. So our, a one month program, uh, which is what they wanted, and the you know, ending in uh, Oshkosh, which would have been a six month program, turned out to be about three months uh, and uh, we ended up doing three flights of a twin turbojet powered uh, Q1. And we have a video of this. We're going to skip around just a little bit. How, how can they find the video upstairs? What oh, okay. Clip? So the video is just going to be called Twerp. The Twerp. You have to see this uh, just briefly as we're talking about this because this is an, is this the exciting one or is this, this is the, the exciting? I only have the exciting video. Okay. Let's let's say, can we roll the, the can we roll the Twerp video? So just a heads up, uh, this is this video or this flight did not end well. Uh, we had a uh, engine failure in uh, short final. Uh, long story short. Um, Rolling on to short final, just about in the flare, got a big gust from the right, rolled the airplane up about 45 degrees to the left. I said, that's enough of that. Stood the power up. Uh, both motors spooled up to 100% and then the left engine failed. At that point, I was at 1.1 VS, so uh, published stall speed on the quickie is 60 miles per hour. is about 64 miles per hour when that happened. Uh, so well below VMCA. Uh, the airplane was uncontrollable for the rest of the flight. Uh, you can see in the video, basically from that moment on, you can see I do a, uh, a stability check, try to figure out if I'm going to try to land uh, straight ahead or try to go around. I make the decision to go around. From that point forward, I'm full right aileron, full right rudder, and modulating thrust so I can either climb without lateral control or uh, descend with lateral control, which is an issue when you're headed towards the boneyard at Mojave. Yeah, um, minor issue. Do we, do we have the video? Let's see if we have it. Or not. We'll give it a second or two, and if we don't have it, we'll just move on. But and this is directly cut from the uh, the actual documentary, which uh, I hope you check out. It's called uh, Mojave Test Pilot. It's on Red Bull TV, but it gives more depth to the program. We also have a report online that's available if you want to know any of the details about the program, size of the motors, the rest of the test program, etc. And I, I, I guess we don't have the video. That's that's going to well. If we, if we do get it, guys, just start it, and uh, we'll we'll start talking about it. The twerp, though, it embodied the imagination. And it, it's not a, uh, a project that you were, you know, hired to do, but I, I wanted to bring that up as a transition here because in the test pilot world, when you're talking about imagination, you and Dick both, I think, have sort of, have sort of said this uh, in, in a way without saying it, that when you want to earn the public's trust and in introducing a new imagination platform, if you will, whether it's another RV, I know, Dick, you're working on the 15, aren't you, right now? Isn't that what you're up to? Something like that. What, what number are you on now? I don't know. I'll have to ask my people to see. Yeah, there you go. He, Dick, Dick's the only person up here with people. It, it, well, Peter can ask Sam, but he can't talk, so <laughs> we, it's all right. Um, let's see. Here's the twerp. Go ahead and roll this. Now, watch, watch what happens here. That's your astronaut voice, isn't it, Elliot? That's... When you're flying in an airplane that's never flown before, you have to be near the edge of the cliff. That's the ominous look at the, the, the bone yard. yard. But what happens when you go too close? 
Is that something recoverable from? With the game that we're playing, I don't know that it is. I don't know. It's a very, very fine line. So, uh, no one really, uh, the, the gasps, I think, are uncomfortable. So, comic relief. Uh, you can go ahead and pause the video. Um, so, that, that moment, right, you know, it's dramatic, uh, going through the trailer. So, it was a, uh, like a mobile home. Uh, there was a moment right before that where I was looking at the slab sides of two 747s, which you can imagine, well, I can only imagine, I've never really spent much time with 747s, but they're pretty firm, and then a relatively soft trailer, and we went back to private training, right? We're like, yeah. like okay, find the soft thing. The comic relief, um, actually, Dick Rattan helped with the project, so did Gene Sheehan, the uh, sort of creator of the Quickie, or one of the strong influences of the Quickie. Um, that you found in a dumpster. That, <laughs> the, right. the, the design, right, not right. that quick. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry about that. Um, so Dick Rattan, I think, I don't need to tell this crowd, but just in case, uh, Dick Rattan flew the Voyager around the world when he did so. They had a control room where they had big ham radios and manuals and maps and weather charts and all that stuff. The building that I crashed through was the Voyager mission control. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Way to go. It was uh, waiting to be towed to the uh, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base to go to the Air Force Museum, was what I was told. <laughs> in my yeah. defense, they'd been waiting for 20 years for the truck to come yeah. in. So. Now, it's a, uh, now, it's, now it can be seen on the next Breaking Bad series. That's right. Uh, yeah, it's going to be great. That, that's awesome. So mm -hmm. I, I bring that up because you know, what we're talking about tonight is, is dangerous stuff. How, how do you... How do you get back on that horse when you've had a failure, when you're dreaming big and you're swinging for the fences? And I'm going to ask all of you this because I'm sure you've all been there. How do you get back on the horse and ride? 